unfortunately, the only the only real treatment seems to work for folks with addiction is abstinence. Exactly, and you know, there's people watching this program right now uh, via the internet. Uh, we're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on a different you know, all over the internet, what would you say to somebody that may be watching this that might need some counseling when it comes to drugs? The first, the first thing I would do, I would locate the sources of treatment in my, in my area. If you're, like I say, if you're in eastern Kentucky or you're in um, anywhere in Kentucky, in fact, the comprehensive care centers will do, a, will do an excellent job of taking care of you. There's a number of private providers. Uh, if you're going into a for-profit program, yeah, they're expensive. Uh, a lot of our programs are based on sliding scales, which means if you don't got any money, we we still take care of you. If you come in, and you say, "I've got, yeah, I've got a little money," then you know we expect you to make a little bit of payment. Mm -hmm. But but by and large, the best value in the state of Kentucky for treatment and rehabilitation is Recovery Kentucky programs. Recovery. Uh, the, we have, like I say, the one we have at Verda is for, for women, and there's a hundred up there. And the closest male program for the folks that may be interested for the for the guys that are in the audience is at Moorhead, an excellent program right. run by my friend Tony White. He's uh, uh, an excellent, an excellent program. And, and in Kentucky right now, there's somewhere between, depending on the construction status, somewhere between 12 and 16. Mm -hmm. uh, not all of them are in operation. There's four of them that are still in construction process. Well, you realize this is a serious, serious issue. And there's so many people being affected by drugs and alcoholism and just different things and of that nature. You know, your neighbors may be cooking this meth and their house blow up and, you know, just all kinds of things. What are some ways that we can better protect ourselves and the community? Because you never know, you might be passing by an alcoholic yep. on your way to the job or well, something. I, I, I personally suspect if folks knew how many folks were impaired that were driving, they probably wouldn't drive. Mm. There's, there's, there's tons of, the, you know, the, the DUI, we, we also run a DUI program. and. Anytime there's there's you know there's a long waiting list of, of programs that right. are people are trying to get into programs there. First thing I would recognize if I had someone that needed help, I, again I'd go back and I would confront them. I'd say what what you know what do you want to do? Try to get them to accept that there is a problem. Get them to, into buy into the program. Again, the next thing I would look at is you know again resources. What what resources do I need? Don't let money be a problem. Right. Okay. Like I said earlier, we've, you know, if someone comes to our program and says, "Look, I don't have any money. I can't, you know, I can't come to your program." Mm -hmm. We, like I said, we never turn anybody away. We we do receive a, a very small amount of state funds, which is we try to be good stewards of it and make sure it, it gets it gets handled in, a, in an efficient manner and help as many folks as we can. Like last year, I think we saw about 1,300 people in the substance abuse mm -hmm. program. In, in, uh, East in, in our region. Um, that's the first. That's the first thing. Is and again, if someone says, you know, I can't go there. I can't do this. You know, you need to tear down the barriers that they're they're throwing up. They're going to throw right. up. You know, and, and again, if you say, do they want treatment? There's an awful lot of people that says, yeah, I need treatment, but wanting treatment, they're not. They're not going to do that. Uh, how would you help an individual that stays in a passed out state? I mean, just totally. Out of it. Well, you got to be very careful with someone who gets into that shape that there's not medical issues. Right. You know, obviously, you don't want to ignore. Uh, of all the medications that we deal with, particularly alcohol, mm -hmm. if you have a person who's doing blackouts right. or having seizures or having withdrawal, those are the most dangerous. Of all of, of the blackouts, and, and dying is a, a distinct possibility, and that's one of the things that you've got to be careful of. You have to make sure that you don't minimize and say, "Well, he's just drunk, he's just sobering," right. uh, you know, or he's he just talking goofy. Right. You know, again, withdrawal from alcohol will kill you. Exactly, yeah. and people don't realize this. It builds up in your system. You can honestly poison yourself and cause disease, even death. Yeah, truthfully what happens with a lot of substance, alcohol users especially, they mix with other drugs. Now if you mix mm -hmm. alcohol and a minor tranquilizer, say Xanax together, you get into what we call potentiation, and potentiation is one plus one equals 
12. It's, right. it's, 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 it's some disproportionate number of, of the amounts. You know, most people that drink says, well, I know what three drinks will do for me. Right. I know what, I know what five drinks, I know what six pack will do for me. But when you start mixing in benzos or you mix in other drugs, you have no idea what's going to happen. Exactly. And, and that's the scary thing. So if you have a friend that's mixing drugs or you know someone who's mixing drugs, then I think you need to be very, very proactive. What would you say to the people watching or listening, by the way, at TV and radio, even young teenagers, about the dangers of even trying that first drink or that first drug, you know, you know abstinence? I, you know, like I say, there's, there's a lot of pressure out there. But truth of the matter is, there's an awful lot of folks that don't use drugs. Right. You know, the perception is that everybody's using drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we, we did some research, I think, in the Corbin City Schools, and it was the perception was that everybody was using drugs or alcohol. And right. it turns out that about 72% of the kids in the program, or some really high number, weren't using drugs. Mm. And, 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 you know, so, so the majority of the, the, the policy in the program they started working was being the majority and obviously 72% is a pretty good majority. Mm. You, know, you know, we've obviously got some work to do with some of the other kids, but 